If we try to graph this one just like the last guy, and you want to make a t-table of values, I want to caution you against always picking 0, 1, and 2. Because if you look at this guy, you've got a fraction here. So whatever value you plug in for x, you have to multiply it times a third, and that's not necessarily going to work out well for you. <coughs> so what we do for problems like this is that we pick our numbers so that it's going to give us nice math. Now, plugging in zero is almost always a good choice. What, would, what do you think would be another good number to plug in here? Three. Why three? Three times uh, one and a half. One over three would make three. Right, right three times one over three would, would reduce. Yeah, would reduce three. Yeah. So if I plug in three, maybe I'd plug in a six as well. I bet that would work out pretty well. So if I plug in zero, one third of zero is still zero, right? minus 4, so I get negative 4. Now notice how this matches up with that self-intercept form we had just talked about. If I plug in 3, you have to do 1 third times 3 minus 4. Okay. So it means the 3's reduce to give you a 1, and 1 minus 4 is what? Negative. If I plug in the 6, 1 third times 6 minus 4, what do I get here? I get 2 minus 4, so I get negative 2. So let's see what happens whenever I plot these guys. Can I ask a sure. Is this slope one third? The slope is one third, right. So can we just put the y-intercept in the slope? Right, if we know the y-intercept in the slope, we can go straight to that. So if you look at this guy, since it is solved for y, you can, at least I hope you can, identify that the slope is negative one third. third no. This is a positive, right? Look at the coefficient here. That's a positive coefficient for x, so it's a positive one third. And what's your y-intercept? Negative four. Zero negative four. Remember, the y-intercept is a point, so we have to give it as an ordered pair. So if I plot these guys, I've got zero negative four. If you use your slope, remember we talked about the slope as being rise over run which means I have a rise of 1 and a run of 3, I'm going to be right here. A rise of 1 and a run of 3 is right here. But look at these order pairs, these points that I have. Don't they match up with the order pairs that I have identified? This guy matches up with 6, negative 3. This guy matches up with 6, negative 2. Right? Now if I keep going here, up 1 over 3, then I'm right there. What about the points that are going to be on the left side of the graph? How do I get those? I'm going to be down one to the left three, right? Down one to the left three and so on. One of the things that we notice here whenever we graph using the slope is that if your slope is positive, from left to right my graph is going to be increasing, it's going to be going up. If you look at the last example that we had, this was the last example right here. This guy was y equals negative 2x plus 7. Your slope was a negative number. What was your graph doing from left to right? It was, it was decreasing, right? So let's connect these guys to make it look nice and pretty. By the way, when you draw lines for me, your lines will be straight because by definition, lines are straight. Okay? What do you guys think about that? And here's the computer graph right here. Perfect, right? Now, what if we're graphing this on a graphing calculator? Okay, I obviously don't want the last problem in here, so let me clear that guy out. I want one third x minus four. Now, if I graph this, it should be very similar to what I see here. 
By the way, if you hit the if you hit the enter button, that acts as a pause button whenever you're graphing. Like you just want to see it for a certain part, or you, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what it does every step along the way. You can do that. Okay. If you press the on button, see right here. You see this is thinking. I don't know if you can see it moving up there. If you press the on button, this is an interrupt command. So whatever's going on in your calculator, if it ends up doing something that's like, you know, it shouldn't be taking this long to do it, you can press the on button. It, it'll just cut it off, stop it right there. Okay. Now, if I look at my table of values, i got some really weird guys going on here, right? You can change the way things look here. If you go to your window, second window, to bring up your table setup, you can determine or you can set what the table starts at. And the second guy right here, this little triangle table, that means delta table, that tells you how much it's incrementing each step. Now, maybe I don't want to increment every one step. <coughs> Bless you. I could change this. Because you may be dealing with things where the numbers are so large, incrementing by one is useless on the table. You may want to increment by every hundred or every thousand. But you can also go down here where it says independent and dependent. X is always your independent value because you, you pick X. You can choose X, so it's independent. But the Y value depends on what you choose for X, right? So I'm going to come down here to independent. Instead of auto, where it completes the table for me, I'm going to select ask. So if I do that and go back to my table, you see that there's nothing here. It will only have the values that I tell it to have here. So if I look at what I, s what I did here, I plugged in 0. I came up with negative 4. I next plugged in 3. And that gives me negative 3. I plugged in 6. And it gives me negative two. So my t table is being completed for me, just the way that I want, just the way that I want it to be completed. I have control over this. If I want to have control over it, I mean, I could even plug in 120. I get 36. Now, obviously, I don't want to plug in 120 because graphing it is going to be a problem, especially when my window only goes up to nine. Right. Of course, you can always adjust this, and you can find graphs online that'll be, you know, negative 10 to 10 all the way, or even goes out to 20. You guys know how to use the internet and how to do searches and find all kinds of crazy things out there, right? But things that don't get you kicked out of the computer lab, right? Right. 